Welcome to Rap, an underground show above ground. My name is Emily Baltz. I am your host from the storefront window of the DKNY shop at 420 West Broadway in New York City. Over the course of the next eight weeks until the end of October, I'm interviewing incredible female artists based in New York City on their recipes for art, process, and lots of other delicious stuff. <laughs> Today with me is Manushka, and am I pronouncing this well? Yeah. Magroire. Yeah, you got it. Woo! Woo! That half French part of me I is good. I was going to say, <laughs> somebody did really I totally did. <laughs> that said, you are an incredible person, and you are the director of community affairs for Afropunk. I am. I am. Yeah, and that's a music festival for anyone who doesn't know that, yeah. held annually in Brooklyn, that now has also expanded kind of globally, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, we have. We um, are now in Paris. I'm actually headed to London on Sunday for the London leg of the festival. Um, we are also in Atlanta, and you said Brooklyn and New York. We are setting our sights to Johannesburg, South Africa for 2017, wow. and Brazil as well. That's incredible. Yeah. So your official title is Director of Community Affairs. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Um, what does that mean? Right. Tell us. You know, <laughs> I'm still searching for that <laughs> answer, Emily. Um, essentially, I, I wear many hats, but that's probably the one that makes the most sense as far as official title. I get to marry strategic partnerships between um, community-based organizations or nonprofits, local government, um, sometimes just larger brands that are looking to do a bit more um, of a give back, uh, more of a um, CSR initiative, which is a, a you know corporate service um, responsibility, um, so or community service responsibility. Um, so there's just a bit of, of that interplay. So it's how do you I don't want to say force, but guide and lead people to understand that um, we live in a very commercial world. Um, everyone has certain bottom lines to meet. But outside of that, what does it look like from a human capital engagement person to person? What, what are you leaving behind for people as opposed to just looking at us as consumers and you're providing us with a product? So I get to coalesce around all of these different type of entities and it's it's really kind of cool because I touch a lot of different parts of our organization and like business in general and just arts and creatives and media and it's kind of all in one big bag. <laughs> that sounds incredible. Yeah. Also overwhelming. Yes. You know? <laughs> Indeed. How do you, I saw that you studied psychology I did. undergraduate. I did. How does that come into play in your work? It sounds like you're deep in human behavior. I am. Um, yeah. Funny enough, I've never worked in the field of psychology, but what I'm learning is, everybody knows this, um, everybody that goes and actually majors in psychology is trying to figure out why they're so crazy. That's psych majors. Are, that's <laughs> literally, that's, that's just a, a, it's a well-known secret. Uh, we are what we study. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like, well, maybe if I go study this, I'll figure out exactly why I'm a little off kilter. Um, but no, honestly, it's, um, for me, I, I, I'm a people person. I'm a connector. Um, I've always been that. Um, I think in my current role, um, it shines through in that way. Um, I'm definitely more of the, um, I'm not gonna say the heart, but like I'm the, the connective tissue and a bit of like the, the culture spirit, if you will, um, of, of like my team. I, it's nothing for me to sort of like get up in the middle of like, you know, typing after hours in front of the computer, just be like, okay, so it's time for a break. And I think it's like, you know, rum o'clock and, you know, let's get some things going. Let's, you know, it's, it's important to sort of not take everything so seriously. And I'm, I'm definitely a proponent of that. So, it, you know, it's, it's good to be able to build rapport with people quickly. Um, people tend to like me and I realize that I tend to like people for the most part. Not everybody's great, but people want to work with and, and hang around and, and do things and provide opportunities for people that they like genuinely. And that's probably one of the, the things that I've learned that I value. That's some of the, the gray soft skills that we don't talk about when you go to school and you're supposed to learn a particular industry or trade or craft. Um, 
I'm about the, that connective tissue again. It's that. It's like, who am I and who are you? How we interrelate is very important as opposed to just our silos and doing our own work and being focused in that microcosm. There's others around us, so look up, say hi, connect. So Manushka, I was reading on the Afropunk website mm -hmm. this amazing quote by Erica Badu that art is the absence of fear. Yep. What role do you see art playing in society? You know, without it, we cannot, we can't fully consider ourselves self-actualized humans or contributing members to society. I honestly believe that. Without the expression of creativity and art and leveraging it as a means to make people uncomfortable, to cause um, the kind of critical um, dialogue, the kind of um, critical uh, sort of remuneration around who we are, what we're contributing, what we can do to advance ourselves both personally and as a collective. Like these are all things that art does. Art bridges gaps between different religious sects, between the sexes themselves, between race, between, that, that's the one thing that's the common denominator, it's the equalizer, right? I can look at, um, you know, an Eli Tahari red coat across the way, and, or is it burgundy? I think it's red, you might think it's burgundy, and we could sit here and talk about what that color makes us feel. And that's the thing, like, art is meant to make you feel. And if you are scared to feel, how are you living? That means you're scared to live. Um, and I personally do, don't want to live in a world where we are all succumbing to that kind of fear um, and also the kind of fear monging that like is currently happening out in the world from a political standpoint. I think there's just also an, an absence of like, sometimes I just want to sit with like a, a coloring book and a crayon with, with Trump or something and go, let's, Let's color your feelings. Let's do that. And maybe that might get them to, I don't know. I don't know. Like, you know, these are things that at the bare necessity, it's, it's what keeps us intrinsically special and connected and allows us to understand who we are in a grander scheme of things. Yeah. It's, it's art an incredibly, is necessary. Yeah. <laughs> It's incredibly necessary, I yeah. so agree. And I think that those forums for personal expression, no matter where we are, mm -hmm. are seem to be growing more and more mm -hmm. today. And I'm curious about that because I think emotional communication has long since been defined as a female expression, let's say. It has. Is that, how do you define what being a female is today mm -hmm. in 2016? Is that relevant, not relevant? It absolutely is relevant and to define that is such a nuanced question. And I, I'm going to learn how to be um, brief. Brevity is not my strong point, so I'm going to, to work Eloquence on that. is. <laughs> <laughs> She's far too kind. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to keep going to the notion of other because it's, it's a, a relatively new concept for me to have, to not hang a hat on, but understand my relation to. Um, in, it, we live in a very patriarchal society and sitting outside of, of that patriarchy makes you acutely aware of like, I'm, I'm other, you know, based on my female parts, based on um, your perceived notions of your expectations of me. These are all things that you file under other and other kind of just lives there in its otherness right excluded from the larger party let's say that's happening um, in 2016 I am acutely aware of how powerful the female voice um, the female celebration has become and will continue to grow um, when we have examples of being able to have dialogue around whether Beyonce is a feminist or not, I would have 
not had these types of articles or content to absorb a few years ago. Um, I think that no matter what field, um, what level of expertise you're, you're in, whether you are homemaker, anything in between, there's something that is glorifying in knowing that asserting our femaleness, our otherness, is something to be so proud of and to acknowledge every step of the way, every time that you're walking down the street, whether you, you choose to put a little switch in your hip or change your hair color or identify with whether or not, you know, you're ready to um, undergo hormone therapy. Like I, I deal with a lot of um, transgender um, youth who we have conversations around what does that mean to live in, in a binary world? That's a whole nother layer of conversation that has to happen. But in 2016, they are, it's a, a brew. All of these things are occurring and it's magical and scary at times and very uncomfortable. Cause you know, I don't, I, I'm not always very equipped to have conversations with people around um, things like sexuality and what does that mean? How does that play a role? Um, whether in the office space or just out in the world. Like these are, these are important dialogues that are happening on the train, on a sidewalk, in a conference room. Like it, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe of it. And, and 2016 is the year of the she, that's what I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, yeah. Everything you're talking about, I mean, to me, this sounds like an art form, what you do. Would you define yourself as an artist? Um, I'm trying to become more comfortable with doing so again. This is me standing in my, my thing, my truth. Um, I would have never, had you asked me this, I've been at, at Afropunk for a year and a half. Had you asked me this like two years ago, I'd be like, of course not. What do you mean? I don't pick up a paintbrush. I don't have a camera. I don't go into, um, you know, I can't make CADs. I don't go into a factory. I don't, I don't, I don't design. Like, no, I don't, I'm not an artist. I have very romanticized ideals of what um, being an artist is, um, what artistic expression is, and I am now becoming more grounded and understanding that I am able to marry left and right brain. And that in and of itself is an art form. I recognize it. I'm going to be better at honoring it and standing in that and saying directly when someone asks me if I'm an artist, absolutely. Yeah, a boundaryless definition. Yeah. 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 It's interesting because everything you're talking about, even the definition of female, this definition of art, yeah. neither one of them are restricted to form. No. Yeah. I think that's a, it's a very 2016 and perhaps a very timeless yeah. definition too. Thank you for uh, helping me to get to that. Whoa. That's you. Oh, my God. Oh my A God. functional show. Look at this light bulb moment. I'm <laughs> learning. I'm learning. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah. Well, it's been such a pleasure to talk yeah, to you. I absolutely. can't thank you enough. And we do have a metaphor to wrap it up with. Okay. Is my, that's my closing line All for right. every show. Yeah. Wrap. So uh, <laughs> RAP, which talks about women, recipes, art, and process. That's okay. what RAP stands for. Uh, here we have your RAP made of your favorite foods. It's chicken, brie, spicy mustard, arugula, tomato, sweet peppers, <laughs> black pepper. And this yeah. thing is very, <laughs> it's like gold. I'm offering you a yay. delicious gold there. You should. I'm also so hungry. So yay. Thank goodness. <laughs> Perfect place to exactly. eat it. Exactly.